I feel like I linger Linger between the words to say eh? To say the words to remember Sad news about the Kaku vs. Kanada video uh, due to an error in my video editing software, I've lost the footage. I've been working to get it back while readjusting to re the return to college in these weird times. But I also recognize that I can't spend forever trying to get back this footage, so while I'm waiting with some um, you know, feedback hopefully coming my way on how to move forward with the recovery of this footage, I've decided to drop some videos, yes, plural, and I thought, what would be a better replacement for Kaku vs. Kanada than Gao Lang vs. Ao Li? So, here we are. So as awesome and thrilling as this is, for those of you that have knowledge of both series, you absolutely know where this is going, but disregarding strength and speed, this match is actually pretty interesting. I'll start with Gao Lang and his awesomeness. <laughs> The first feat we ever get from Gao really sets the pace for this guy, and it's a bar we see him pass time and time again, but it's definitely a strong start. Uh, he fights some dude that can take a hit from two Nakmoys at the same time from opposing directions, uh, creating a bit of a crushing effect, without sustaining notable damage. And Gao's fighting this really tough guy, and he starts the fight by hitting this guy with 15 fucking jabs faster than the guy can see and he instantly knocks the guy out. And if you think that's impressive, that's probably not even his top speed, as we learned from Best Boy Jerry uh, during the Kanada vs. Gao fight, that Gao can actually throw 13 jabs in a single breath while weighed down by 10-ounce boxing gloves. Rest assured, while Ali is known prolifically for his speedy jabs for a heavyweight, it sounds to me that Ali's got competition here. Now, Gao didn't make it uh, far into the tournament, but that's definitely not because of a lack of power, speed, or skill. He just fought one of maybe four people in that tournament that could actually beat him quite early on. And that person would be the Fang of Metsudo, Kano Agito, who I've done a video on before with uh, him versus Retsukayo of Baki, so go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But as a recap of speed, both of these fighters, Gao and Kano, uh, far outspeed the point-blank bullet dodging Akoya. Uh, so that alone should give you an idea of the speed at play here. With that in mind, Gao is shown to be comparable in speed to the Fang, which is why I'd say Gao is faster than Akoya, as Kano couldn't even tag Gao with several jab attempts, one of the fastest moves in the fighting world. Not only that, but Gao has shown to be able to even strike Kano and dodge him at the same damn time. Hell, there might even be an argument for Gao being faster than Kano, as even when both men throw a punch at the same time, Gao can land his punch and block Kano's, whereas Kano got cupped out of a face shot on Gao and he got smacked in his mouth. Now, Ali is considered to be quite the fast and skilled boxer, taking down heavy hitters like Frazier and Foreman with speed, precision, and timing on top of his heavyweight strength, but Gao just might be too much for him in the skill department. The man can stop his punch mid-blow and change directions, something that could prove to be very important against Ali's signature sway back and jab style of no guard boxing. Furthermore, he doesn't have the weaknesses that most combat sportsmen have. He actually thinks of the battlefield in terms of being 3D, not just 2D. After avoiding a sweep kick by jumping it, he not only thinks to jump it as opposed to sidestepping it or blocking him, chancing a further assault in a bad position or sustaining minor damage, but he continues his own assault to avoid allowing Kanada to use his mid-air position by punching Kanada while he's in mid-air. Also a minor note, as this isn't something I'd expect to see from either fighter due to their styles, but Gao has shown to be able to counter throws, something not at all present in boxing and barely if at all present in Muay Thai, as well as escaping from a lock by throwing a punch in an unstable position. That said, we return to some more practical example of his skill, at least in terms of applying them here, with his Fang fight. Sure, the punch from an unstable position was impressive, but that was just to break from a lock, so it can't be that useful here, right? Wrong. That sense of balance and control of his center of gravity also finds use in defense and counter, even in a disadvantageous position, 
as he was able to shoulder block a punch from the Fang and counter immediately despite being off balance the whole time. Oh, you think you're safe if you don't fight him? Wrong again, bitch. The man can counter you before you even make an attack. He also dabbles in grappling himself, at least to the extent you'd expect from a boxer with their hugs and such, as he employs this boxer hug technique on the Fang to intercept a kick, ending the hug with an uppercut. While the Fang successfully managed to block the uppercut, what started as an assault on Gao ended up with the Fang himself being pushed back. Not only can he do a bit of grappling himself, but that shit don't work on him so good either. Fang tries to flex some of the tricks he picked up from Okubo in a, uh, with a takedown, and gets a knee to the fucking skull as a congratulations. Gao's assault is so overwhelming and his defense is so impregnable, Kano literally has no other option other than to face the world's greatest boxer in a boxing match due to the risk of anything but boxing being countered essentially depriving Kano of one of his most important traits, his variety. Now Kano has to combat the pinnacle of all strikers, a boxing and Muay Thai master on his home field. We see that Kano makes another attempt at grappling the striker, but Gao uses a, a teep kick to keep the fight in his court. He's very good about maintaining the fight in a striker, you know, area of expertise. So, you know, Let's say he was fighting somebody who did a lot of takedowns and grappling and submission, maybe someone like uh, Imai Cosmo, uh, if you'll remember from Kengen. Uh, that probably wouldn't go too well because he's very good about keeping the fight in a striking area. And it seems like Kano's striking ability isn't faring much better, as even when he lands his punch, he still misses and gets smashed in the face. Yeah, Gao gets hit in the face by the Fang, but lets the punch slide across his face to avoid the damage, and bops Kano's mouth at the same time. He's truly a monster in the best possible way. And let's not kid ourselves here. Strength has just as much to do with a fight as speed and skill, and in that department, Gao just ain't lacking. With one punch, dude was able to crater Kaneda's head into the ground. That's not all, though. In terms of strength, the man really gets to flex his strength against Kano in round 2. Fang and Gao clashing causes shockwaves that can physically affect the referee, forcing him to GTFO. But make no mistake, Fang is buckling in the knees just after two hits, so it's not exactly an even clash by any sense of the word. Fang tries to go on the defensive after this, you know, probably to recover. Uh, but Gao just slips his defense with a decent shot and blasts Fang's ass into next week with a combo of jabs and other punches and finishes with a blow to the stomach that almost sends Kano to sleep faster than a NyQuil. Now, of course, we won't see much of that uh, defense slipping against Ali, seeing as Ali doesn't really put up his guard. It's part of his whole style, the no-guard style of boxing. And that said, when he's greatly outmatched, as we saw against him fighting Yujiro, uh, he does tend to put up his guard, but that could just be because Yujiro has this fear aura about him. He's so mo much more overwhelmingly powerful than, you know, Aoli. We'll talk about strength and speed and everything, but essentially, if we're turning the wheel back to Gao's strength, well, we also see Gao is able to stop all of uh, Kano's Feng shenanigans he's up to with just his power alone as well. He stops Kano's uh, sweep kick with his fucking skull, a la Sapeng. You know, call back to his good buddy there. Uh, that said, boxing isn't the only area we see Gao's strength shine through. As with that headbutt, we kind of see the transition from boxing to boxing and Muay Thai, with Gao busting Kano's forearm with a kick, stopping Kano's counter attempt, and then just fucking smashing him in the face again. Mans does not like Kano's creepy ass face. Furthermore, with a single swipe of the elbow across Kano's neck, we get to see what the inside of his neck looks like, trachea and all. You may be thinking, well how strong can Gao really be? He lost in round 2. Again, make no mistake, in a contest of blows, Gao is actually superior to the Fang of Metsudo. He is undoubtedly the strongest boxer and Muay Thai fighter in Kengen, and just from the sheer strength of his punches, even the Fang was under constant pressure of breaking down. If you need proof of Gao's ability to take a hit and truck on, just read and watch the Gao vs Fang fight. But to sum it up here, as far as endurance goes, even with a direct face shot taken, he still has the wherewithal to dodge the next shot and return fire. He soldiers on, no matter what. 
Unfortunately, Gao does end up losing to the Fang, but that's not the end of his journey, as we later see him rack up even more speed feats with a greedy fervor. He is able to avoid the sword slashes from Long Ming and Ming's ranged weapon. Despite Ming being the leader of the invaders of the Kengen Annihilation Tournament, and likely being more skilled, faster, and stronger than a large majority of the Kengen Tournament participants, and with weapons to boot. But enough about Gao, this isn't his character profile or overview, this is a fight! So allow me to introduce his opponent, the greatest boxer to ever live, Muhammad Phantom Fist Ali. Now this may come as a surprise to hear, but Gao pretty much blows Ali out of the water in just about every way. Now I will say this, Ali's jab is actually faster than Gao's. Shocking, I know. But according to Respiratory Rates uh, Wikipedia, a single breath takes five seconds in total, two seconds to inhale and three seconds to exhale, and that's pretty much an average. So with 10 ounce boxing gloves, Gao can belt off 13 jabs in five seconds. That said, with these same 10 ounce gloves, Ali was stated to be able to punch 17 times in two seconds, the punch only being 0.11 seconds from start of motion to impact, which is faster than a brain can even send a signal to a muscle to move. Even if we're generous and say the single breath was only referring to two second inhales, it's still 13 shots in two seconds to 17 shots in two seconds. That said, that's where Ali's wins pretty much end, as Gao is faster in terms of overall combat, with Ali only comparing to a casual young Yujiro, who may have only been supersonic to hypersonic at the time, with Gao being well into hypersonic for sure. In terms of strength, Ali's best showings land him only at the low tier top mark, or the lower half of the mid tiers in Baki only scaling to people like uh, Iron Michael, due to Ali being said to be the strongest boxer in the world, he would scale above Iron Michael, who can apparently hit as hard as a speeding car. Uh, he also was able to completely destroy Prime Igari in a fight, to the point that Igari spent 90% of the match just laying down and trying to wrestle Ali. And Prime Igari was a match for Mount Toba, who, if you guys have watched the first season of Baki, was actually a pretty difficult fight for 15-year-old Baki. The best you could say for Ali in terms of strength is that he scales to Joe Frazier, who was uh, a physical equal to Retsukayo during the Son of Ogre boxing arc, but that still doesn't put Ali on fang level. Now, while Ali is down 0-2 due to strength and speed, only finding solace in a faster punch, at least we can give him a draw in the skill department. Gao is extremely skilled in terms of balance, positioning, etc., as well as having a mastery of over Muay Thai, making him a master of two striking arts as opposed to Ali's one art. However, Muhammad Ali was not only the, one of the most skilled boxers alive, rivaling possibly Gao's own boxing accomplishments, but Ali then goes on to create and almost perfect a completely comprehensive martial arts based off of his no-guard style boxing called The Art of Ali, or Muhammad Ali's Mixed Martial Art. While he was unable to master it due to being benched for draft dodging, he's still quite proficient in this style, getting a young Yujiro to actually get serious against him. This style can avoid, counter, or defend against any means of attack just by using two moves in conjunction with things like timing, positioning, and distance. The swayback and the jab. By utilizing the swayback, Gao's means of attack, be they punches, kicks, tackles, or grapples, will all be dodged. Furthermore, Ali will be able to make use of his jab being faster than Gao's flash basically after every dodge, with even Gao's slower flash causing problems with predictive abilities of someone like Kanada, who was able to see 10 steps ahead of his opponent due to its speed. Gao's going to be hard pressed to predict and counter these jabs, seeing as his prediction isn't as good as Kanada's, and Ali's jab is faster than the move that gave Kanada trouble. Finally, in terms of endurance, Ali is pretty marginal considering his career. He's a pretty run-of-the-mill for a top athlete considering his whole spiel was not getting hit, so I'd have to give this one to Gao as well, displaying exemplary endurance against the Fang. After all this, I'd say the winner is the Thai God of War, 
Gaolang Wong Salat. He's much faster, so in terms of overall combat, he would take it. He's going to be outspeeding and outpacing the whole time other than when those jabs are thrown. And he's stronger, so he'll sack Ali faster than the reverse. As he's already overwhelming Ali with speed. And finally, Gao is going to be able to take a lot more punishment than Ali. So even if the sway-back jab combo does present an issue, Gao can just tire Ali out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching as much as I did making this. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to show me how much you liked it and that you want to see more. Comment about who you think would win and why, or maybe some suggestions for future fights. Until next time, this has been some random YouTube dude. <laughs> See you next time.